Hello, my nature loving friends. If you are new here, my name is Jackie. And today I want to talk to you about phenology. Phenology is basically the study of nature's cycles and patterns and the timing of those. So today we're going to look at for some signs of spring and how those signs can help us figure out what is actually good for us to plant. So we're going to throw away our planting guides. We don't need them right now. We're going to get rid of those and we're going to look at nature and see what nature is telling us that it's okay to plant. I'm going to take you for a little walk around the property and we'll see what is in bloom. I can tell you already that I know some of the cycles that have happened is the last two nights I've been hearing the tree frogs singing and they are so loud. So they are out of hibernation. They are mating. That is a huge sign of spring for me. This also happened last year around the same time as the herring wren. So I like kind of how that's connected that the herring wren was just this week um, in my area and then now the frogs have started. And um, I saw a bumblebee the other day in one of my crocuses yesterday at the golf course. I was out for friends with lunch and there was just bees everywhere. So that was another big sign of spring. Um, so yeah, let's take a look around and let's see what we can find signs of spring to let us know what is safe to plant. So I think this daffodil is going to be blooming very soon, which means then I can plant my um, beet root vegetables like beets and chard. Crocuses in bloom mean you can plant your radishes, turnips, and spinach. That the, the soil is now warm enough for those, which might have been up for a couple weeks now, so I could have planted those a little while ago already. Hey, so because I don't have forsythia on my property to see if it's time to plant peas, I'm actually just going to use this as a sign. So these are winter field peas that I had kind of left. So a lot of them reseeded themselves and have just started to grow back on their own. So that is a really clear sign to me that the ground is warm enough for peas. So I'm going to start um, planting a bunch of peas today. So today I'm going to be planting some miner's lettuce seeds as well. It is, uh, this is miner's lettuce right here. It's growing in the shade. Um, this was a plant I take, I had to forage some and then I had dumped a bunch of it here last year, hoping that it would take over this area. And it looks like it is. This is a perennial. It is considered like a weed um, here, but it actually is really tasty. I actually prefer these little leaves to spinach. Um, and I mean, anything nature is going to grow for me is a win in my book. So if you don't have any um, seeds or miner's lettuce, I would suggest trying to get some miner's lettuce or go out and forage and, and take some home and, and replant it. The lupin has actually been up for quite a while already. Um, yesterday's warmth just gave it a massive boost. Um, so I'm not sure what this, what if this could be used as anything, but I'm interested in learning more just about my region and the plants that grow or that are native here and what they could be signs of. Okay, so I do want to plant some perennial flowers today and I know the lupin is already up so I can probably plant lupin seeds. That's a clear sign of that. Um, but they say, so phenology, that if you are wanting to plant your perennial flowers, you should wait until your maple leaves are budding out. So let's go take a look at my maple tree at the back of my property to see if there's any little buds on there today. This is my big beautiful maple that is just kind of on the property line and it would be green I think if it was completely butted out so it's not quite ready yet. Uh, this is another little smaller maple and you can see it is definitely starting to bud out but they're not quite um, green leaves yet. But I think probably in the next week or so, so maybe I'll hold off planting some of those flowers for now and wait until those are in bloom or leafed out, I guess. Um, you also have to take in consideration too, like if you're just going by one tree, it's probably not gonna give you the best results because trees get different access to sunlight. Like this one is shaded right now, whereas that other maple is in sun. All right, so as I said, for Scythia, when that is in bloom, that is the time that you can plant peas, onions, and lettuce. Now, I don't have any for Scythia on my property, and it's important to remember that like every little place has its own little microclimate, and my property here definitely has its own microclimate. It is very, very hot in the summer here, and it's like quite a few degrees cooler in the winter than it is in like um, the actual town because it's just the way the elevation is and whatnot. So I'm trying to make my own planting guides. So what I'm gonna do for my um, 
little sheet, my cheat sheet here that I made based on um, the Pacific Northwest planting guides for my region. Um, I'm going to add my own notes to this. So I like the fact that the trees or the, I know that the frogs have started singing two days ago that the herring wren has come through. So I'm going to use that as my own guide to this is when I'm planting peas. And obviously I'm going to keep track of my peas and see did they grow well is this a good time for me to be planting peas um, I think that other indicator in the garden that my winter field peas are already starting to come up is a good sign that the soil is ready for them because I'm even planting my my peas in my raised garden bed so the soil is even warmer in there so I think that they'll be able to handle um, this little bit but I'm going to add this to the back of my my cheat sheet here so that I know that when the frogs start to sing and when the herring run happens you can plant your peas out. And because my crocuses have been up for a little while already uh, I'm going to plant some more radishes today. I'm going to plant some spinach and um, arugula is not on that list but I think it's kind of comparative to um, spinach and I have this uh, perennial arugula from cicada seeds that I've been really excited to try so I'm going to plant that. I'm also going to plant some kale today. Um, I have some more perennial kale that I'll plant a few more of those but I also just have other varieties of kale that I would like to plant just so I can have some more little baby greens. I still have a lot of kale in the garden already but I feel like you can just never have too much kale and oh and then I'm going to plant those miners miners lettuce uh, a little bit more of that. So that's what I'm going to plant today based on what signs I've seen in the garden for what is ready to be planting. So um, let's get to it. Okay, so these are my um, plans, which I have a video on how I planned out some of these garden beds, which I will link above if you would like to see them. But here I have some peas planted in this garden bed here. And then it looks like I have some peas across here planted. So out of these ones here, I'm gonna plant, I think all of them now, um, this row here and this row here. I should maybe stagger a little bit but I actually like love to have a lot of peas so I'm not too worried if um, they're all ready at the same time because I think that eating fresh snap peas is like my little treat in the garden when I'm out there doing work to snack on. So and then here I have some arugula across here so I will plant some arugula today, plant the peas and I also have another garden bed that I haven't finished planning yet which is kind of this is my like kind of my old food forest map I haven't updated it in a while um, but I've made another little uh, garden bed here and that's where I'm going to plant some of that perennial arugula and as soon as those dandelions are in bloom it is your sign to plant potatoes as soon as your apples start to um, have blossoms on them then you can plant your bush beans as soon as those apple blossoms fall to the ground it is warm enough to plant your pole beans and your cucumbers uh, they say for squash look for lilacs in full bloom um, lily of the valley is a good sign if when those are in bloom that it's warm enough for your tomatoes and they say your bearded irises, when those are in bloom, you need to have, you can plant your peppers outside and your eggplants, all those heat loving plants. And then um, your peonies, when your peonies are in bloom, you can plant your cantaloupe and your watermelon and other heat loving melons. So I'm going to try to plant by this guide this year just to see. Indigenous groups and early gardeners around the world have been using nature's signs to help them harvest, to plant, to know when to forage certain things. And it's really something that I think we're all going to be needing to use more as our climate is changing. We need to be looking to the signs of what is happening in nature as opposed to these calendars saying like you can plant on this date because we really just need to be observing our environment and because things are changing, right? So it's a good practice to get into and I'm trying to learn more about it as well as planting by the moon cycles as well because I kind of like all that witchy stuff and I think it's I think the more that we can be in tune with nature the better our gardens are going to be and just the better our lives are going to be in general. So that's all I'm going to plant for today. I planted um, some kale, some arugula, some radishes and some peas based on the signs of spring that I saw that told me it is time to plant these things. Uh, I'm going to hold off on a few other things until my daffodils are in bloom and um, I'm going to 
keep adding to my list of phenology because I think that is the way to be going for my own little microclimate is watching to see what is growing here, when it is in bloom. Um, it is like my spot, as I said, is pretty hot in the summer. Like it does, like the sun is, whew, it's, it's warm. I need a hat pretty soon. But uh, anyways, let me know in the comments below. If you plant with the signs of spring, do you use phenology? What cycles or which signs do you look for before you plant? Or do you just go by blind faith with planting guides? Um, I'm curious. I wanna know what's best for my little microclimate here. So I'm gonna keep keeping these, I'm going to keep keeping records on these and hopefully I can update more videos on what works for me and maybe it'll work for you if you have similar plants in your area that you can watch for. So anyways, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!